Remember this guy? Last year he made headlines when his Waco compound was raided by federal authorities. David Koresh and his followers were millennialists, people who think the end of the world is coming. For Koresh, the end came sooner than expected. As the year 2000 approaches, millennial groups across the US are growing. Not all of them are as scary as Koresh, but they're just as unusual. I am his love protecting here. I am his love protecting here. Like millennialist Elizabeth Clare Prophet, experts say there are something like 2,500 millennial groups here in the US. Should we be worried about them? I thought I'd visit four groups and find out. I started in Oakland, California, at the headquarters of a fundamentalist Christian broadcaster, Harold Camping. He thinks the end is pretty near. You're predicting into the world for... Yeah. September. Right. So do you want to take us through... In Matthew 24, verse 21, it says, And then there will be great tribulation such as this world has never known nor ever shall know. In other words, it's the end. The evidence in the Bible points to the fact that September 6 of 1994 will be the last day of the final tribulation period. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, fifteenth okay. day. No, I'm not completely clear on what's happened on, on, on September 6th. Lots is going to happen. When I beheld, when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. That's this day right here. This could be the day when Christ returns. This date right here. Okay. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. In other words, tremendous cataclysmic, cataclysmic things are happening all over the world. It is terrible, super terrible. And everyone will know it's Judgment Day. But it'll be too late for salvation because that ended on the 6th. It's possible, I suppose, that no one will end up in hell, that everyone will be so good. No. No, 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 no. Now we present Open Forum with our host and Bible teacher, Harold Camping. Camping has a daily TV show of Bible discussion on which he occasionally has guests. And his radio stations broadcast to millions around the world. Here we see our, our signal going into Europe, okay? right. into the United Kingdom. England is in bad shape spiritually. Very bad shape, spiritually. How about the royal family in England? As you know, they're the head of the church. I don't think it looks good at all, especially as we see what's been happening in the royal family. Fergie's the one I'm worried about. In spreading his predictions, Camping uses equipment with some creepy associations. Camera, incidentally, came out of the People's Temple. Remember the Jim Jones thing? Well, we use this for, for all of our graphics when we're printing, and because we have a whole printing shop here. So that's like a living link between uh, 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 the Jim Jones church. I don't know if it's a single. I don't know if it's a living link. It's. A, I think it's a dead link myself. Really. <laughs> Even if the world doesn't end, camping's cheerful about the future. So you keep going if it if it does if it doesn't happen. You're just. Oh, you I, keep on yeah, I just won't retire. Right. I, I'm planning to retire in September, but if it doesn't happen, I can't retire. I got to keep working. Not all millennial groups preach Christian love. Take the Church of Jesus Christ Christian in Oxon, Montana. Uh, we teach the gospel of the kingdom, uh, which Jesus teached. Uh, he did not teach uh, a gospel of so-called brotherly love among other races, as very commonly portrayed today as Jesus' teachings. Uh, he came only for his own race, uh, the white race, the Aryan or Adamic race. Churches like this one have more than 50,000 members nationwide, and they're preparing for the worst. Well, we believe now that we are in the very end times. There's going to be great uh, tumult and, and great uh, uh, violence and, and uh, uh, perhaps riots and, and that type of thing, uh, interracial in nature in the cities. Let's say uh, I worship the devil. Yeah. Should I be worried? You should be very worried. Those of us lucky enough to make it through the end of the world will face still more trials. Each race will have their own territorial imperative, their own place. There will be no integration. Right. And, and will it be on Earth? No. See, the Earth was the inheritance of, of his children only. So, so only the white people get Earth. Uh, now, the planet that the uh, black people get, would it be better than the white people's planet? About the same? Well, not quite as good. It, well, it'll be the original homeland. Uh, for instance, if, if you remember... I'm talking about in terms of facilities. Well, it's whatever they make it. So what, they could make it as nice as they want. Exactly. So what about if there are white people on Earth and then, and then Earth's not doing so well and then they see that the black people have done a good job on their planet, would they be allowed to, to maybe... 
no, the great? There is no, no interracial mixing, no. No. Not even if they really, really want to? No. You mentioned that there's some truth in the predictions that are in some of the episodes of Star Trek. Uh, Star Trek does represent some of the battles that were fought when Lucifer actually came to the Earth and declared himself a god. How about Star Wars? Star Wars is a good one. Uh, same way, yeah. Same way? Pretty yeah. accurate. Yeah, pretty Very accurate, accurate. yep. Yeah. I have one eensy, speensy, speensy, teensy, weensy bit of Jewish blood. Do you think I might be allowed to stay on planet Earth? You will have it someplace that you can call your own. Yes. Yeah. You will have a place. After the race war, when we're on other planets, maybe we can keep in touch by phone. Uh, communications are unlimited. Yeah. You know, when, when things are put back right. Uh... Yeah. Other millennial groups preach a more upbeat message, like the Unarius Academy in Southern California. We're not predicting doom and gloom or fearful of doom and gloom. In the year 2001, we expect the first spacecraft to land from another planet in our galaxy. The Unarians claim thousands of followers, but somehow they don't seem the types to stockpile weaponry. And the doves of peace coming out, and the roses of love, etc., and the radiations of healing spiritual light. And if you look very closely, there's one tear coming from Satan's eye there. The Unarians took me to see the 65 acres they've bought for the spaceship's landing and lent me a Starfleet uniform. It doesn't look like it would be the ideal landing place for a spacecraft just because it's so uneven. Oh, well. do, you, do you foresee that as a problem? The uh, technology that they possess, the Space Brothers, uh, and uh, considering where they come from, their planets, their cities are entirely in advance of anything that we know of. Is it okay to call them aliens? Uh, no, they're not aliens. They're homo sapiens, like you and I. They have the same anatomy. The homo... Homo sapiens. sapiens. Are they going to be those little small guys? With no, the, no, those, with those the... small guys that you see, they're just manufactured robots. Like other religions, the Unarians like to sing hymns, in their case, to the spaceships. For those who can't wait until 2001, a millennial group in Missoula, Montana expects the end much sooner, and they have reason to know. I am sent by God with a mandate direct from God. I am the second coming of Jesus, the high priest. Like his forebear, Jensen has 12 apostles. After the apocalypse, these people expect to be governing the world. If you've got nine of them, does that, does that constitute a quorum? This is all of them. They all couldn't make it today. Being well connected, Jensen can get fairly specific with his predictions. By the time that this is put on the air or whatever, uh, this will, some of this will have already happened. What's number one? Uh, atomic war. Atomic war. In which a third of the people will be dead in one hour. A third to dead the in one hour. The, the destruction of New York City is only about four or five days away. First bombs will come from uh, Saddam Hussein. You, sh are you sure? 390 days from the bombing of the Trade Towers in New York, according to the fourth chapter of Ezekiel, will be the full-scale destruction of New York City. For sure. That's unbelievable. This will be followed by a meteor hitting the Earth. And then we will have the Great Earthquake, and the fourth wave of destruction will be Earth-shifting crust. Where we are sitting here was light from two to 3,000 miles southward. We'll be down where Mexico is. Will we get a Mexican climate? Of course. Yeah. We'll grow bananas in our backyard. Really? No. I, I've already got the place where I'm going to grow mine. In the back part there where I don't have raspberries, I'm going to have banana trees. There'll be new fauna and flora. There'll be new animals coming out, the fish coming out of the sea becoming animals. Yeah. It will be the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. It will be heaven on earth, in other words. Would beasts suitable for petting? Yes, of course. If it happened that I and the crew were still staying at the Red Lion Inn in Missoula when, when it happens, yes. would we be allowed into the shelters? Of course. A lot of places out of New York where the people can go to, uh, when New York is bombed. Eh? At the time of taping, the world had not yet ended. But when I called Dr. Jensen's group on the day New York was supposed to be bombed, they didn't seem discouraged. Hey, Neil, it's Louie. How are you doing? Where are you calling from, Louie? From New York. I just wanted to check in with you. There doesn't seem to be a whole lot going on, so I just wanted to double check. Yes? You know, about the, the bomb and so forth. I've been looking for the waves of destruction, and, and I, I can't seem to find any of them. 
Yeah, well, I've been waiting seven years that I've been in the faith, and you've only been waiting a few days. You can wait a little longer. 